All right, everybody, welcome back. So today isn't that interesting of stuff, but it's necessary. We're going to be doing some bug fixing. So there's, I don't know, five or six bugs that came up when I was working with this that I found. And if you find any others, please feel free to let me know. Um, so let's jump right in. Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be fixing a few bugs that we have here. If you ever find a bug in this, feel free to let me know. It's not going to hurt my feelings or anything like that. I want this to be the best it possibly can be for the community. So I definitely want to know if something isn't working as, as planned. So I want to see if I can make one of the bugs appear right now. So if I swap these two pieces here. <laughs> okay, there we go. So let's fix a few of these right now. Now I had mentioned in the uh, annotations that I made for my previous video that um, instead of doing this hint.calldeferred free, I needed to do something else. So what I'm gonna do instead is say uh, if hint, then hint.queue free, and, and then set hint equal to null. So that's the first one. Let's see if I can get a couple other errors to pop up here. I think there were like three or four, and the solution to them wasn't obvious right away. Okay, so here we've got an error with current color array ij. And the reason that's happening is because this is checking all pieces ij, if all pieces ij is not equal to null. So this is in the find matches function. I had added the override to set all pieces to be the default array. However, when I'm finding hints and checking to see if there's um, a deadlock, I'm using this function in a generic form, so I'm, I'm overriding that. And so this needs to be array. And let's just take a second and make sure that nowhere else in here it calls all pieces. So we've got array, 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 array. Okay, cool, so that's another issue. Uh, let's try this again here. Okay. All right. Cool. So what was the name of this problem? Get index four on base array. Okay. So here's a few ways. I know we haven't talked too much about debugging stuff, but here's a few ways that you can go through debugging. So in this case, I have the error here. And the last one is the place where the actual problem came from, which is line 760, this else statement. Now, the frame that, or the line that called that was 765, so hints is equal to all matches, and the line that called that was 816. So 765 said that hints is equal to find all matches. And then find all matches went through, and it checked switch and check match color equals clone array ij dot color else so the error is that it's looking outside of the array so something's happening where when it's looking for the matches it's looking outside of where the array is which is why like in this example i only have four rows and four columns zero one two three it was looking for something in column four and that's why it said invalid get index four on base array or something like that so what i have to do here is before i check i want to make sure that what i'm looking for is in the grid so i'm going to change this just a little bit so i'm going to say if switch and check and uh, let's do is in grid and what I want to see if it's in the grid is vector 2 i j plus 1. Because we're only going to need to do this if that's in the grid. And then I'm probably going to have to do something similar for the other side too. So again, we're working right now in the find all matches. Here, uh, switch and check. And then I also want to make sure that I'm not checking. Actually, can I maybe do this in just the switch and check? That would probably make more sense. So switch and check. Switch pieces. 
no, I guess I have to do it here because that doesn't actually look. So then this is going to have to be and is in grid. And this time it's not vector. Uh, vector 2. And this is going to be i plus 1j, I think. So if match color is equal to clone array dot color hint holder append so yeah it's i plus one j okay let's save this we're squashing a lot of bugs here all right let's go back to our game uh let's swap that okay the other bugs that i found didn't show up until i played for a little bit so i might just play for oh so there's one right there you notice how it's telling me that there's a hint there until the hint timer finally goes. And now I have this one. And now I have two hints right now. So that was caused because when I made the match that caused this last collapsing of everything, I didn't use this piece. So it never destroyed the hint. So when the new pieces fell in and the hint timer elapsed, it created another hint. And now I have two hints. And this is a big problem because right now the grid script does not know what this hint is. This hint is a, it's a wild hint. It's a rogue hint. So we're going to have to fix that. So what I want to do here is I'm going to take a look at my destroy matched method. So in destroy matched, uh, I'm going to go to if was matched. I'm going to make a little teeny tiny function to destroy the hint. And I might as well put this all next to the hint logic. So I'm scrolling way, way down here. Clear and store board. Where's the hint logic? There we go. So I'm going to call this function destroy hint. And so I'm going to say if hint uh, hint dot q free hint equals null. So then in my destroy matches method or destroy matched method, if was matched, I'm going to call destroy hint so that I'll destroy that hint before it causes an issue. Now, that should make it so that the hint is always being destroyed. Let's, uh, let's try that now. So let's hit play. Oh, okay. See, that time the hint was very useful. I didn't even see the match. These two. Okay, so now we've got hint.position. So what's the problem with that? Invalid get index is zero on base array. So if hints is not equal to null, hints rand. So this means that the random came up with zero. So Let's say if hints are not equal to null, and then if hints.size greater than or equal to zero, and I'm going to add that as another check, and then I'll indent this whole block of text right there. And let's save that. Let's try this now. Squashing all kinds of bugs today. All right. OK, so I remember this one. So this is grid 332. So if array i minus 1j dot color is equal to current color and array i plus 1j dot color is equal to current color, what did I invalid get index color? So it means it's trying to find the color on a piece that doesn't have a color. OK. So if not is piece null, i minus 1. Oh, so why did I do this one as not is piece null, but then the rest of them are all? That's weird. So this is what you get for stretching out a project over so long. What does is piece null do? I totally forgot is piece null. Okay, it just tells you if it's if it's null. Oh, but this only does it for all pieces, that's why. It doesn't do it for the array. 
So the is piece null function here, I'm going to add another argument, array is equal to all pieces, so that I can um, overload this. So then instead of this being all pieces, this is going to be array. All right, cool. I knew I remembered that one. Um, all right, let's try this again. Okay, so that hint went away. All right, we've got a hint in the right spot. Okay, like I said, a couple of the bugs didn't show up until I played this for a little while, so I might fast forward through this part. That was good, that hint got destroyed. Okay. And if I click on it, the hint gets destroyed like it should. I wonder, did I make it so that it'll generate another one after it destroys that hint? Oh, I must not have. Okay. So I need to do that too. Um, okay. So now we're having a problem with get index color on base nil. So line 332, if if array i minus 1 dot color is equal to current color and array i plus 1 j dot color is equal to current color. I wonder if I change both of these to be not is piece null i plus one j. I wonder if that'll fix it. Because that's, oh, I need to tell it that's the problem. I didn't tell it the array to pass in. So then the array to pass in is array. Good lord. All right. So let's save. Let's try this again. Do, do, do. This is what programming is, folks. Oh, okay. Well, that's certainly interesting. You don't think that's a match. Okay. I might have just broke something. So line 772. Hint dot position equal hints rand. Yeah. Hints dot size is supposed to be greater than zero. But it's not able to find hints zero. And it's being called from generate hint. Okay. I wonder what that could be. So the problem is um, we're trying to call whatever is in position zero of hints because this did random range zero hints.size. But we should only be doing this if hints is greater than or equal to zero. Well, let's, let's add another check here. So let's say if hint rand, or actually let's do this while not hint, or hints rather, rand. Um, we're going to say rand equals floor, rand range zero, hint dot size. One more. Okay, so what this is doing here is since we're since we're um, having an issue with it telling me back what the hint is, what hint zero is, dot position, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, well, not hints rand, and this this kind of structure here where it's not and then just the object, it's saying, well, this isn't null, or sorry, well, it is null, and it's going to choose a new random number. And I just want to see here, this might cause a stack overflow. So before I get too far, I'm going to save all my scenes. So let's try that. OK, so match, match. All right. Yeah, it's still get index 0. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to check how I fix this on my other version of this. Okay, I'm really dumb sometimes. So 
when I did hints dot size greater than or equal to zero, <laughs> this should have just been greater than zero. I don't want it when it's equal to zero. Then I don't need all this extra stuff I put here. I don't need that. Um, also, I want to make sure that I'm destroying the hint before I try and make a new one, just for 100% surezies. So I'm going to add this destroy hint here, even though it should have been called before we got this far. All right, let's try this one more time. Not one more time. We'll try it again as many times as we need to. All right, so let's swap those. Okay, so like I said, I might... That's weird. Why is it not detecting... Why was it not detecting a match there? Yeah, and it's not detecting a match here either. Or there. Huh, okay. Let's, uh, let's find out what's up with that. Let's... Hold on a second, I'll be right. Okay, sorry about that. Some days I'm smarter than others, and today just isn't one of those days. So here's where the problem is. Uh, if we take a look here, and we go to Find Matches, um, where I change this not is piece null, and I don't even know why I have that there. I should just change it. The problem was I forgot to change take this away. And so what it was doing is it was making sure this piece wasn't null. And then it was just checking to make sure I got a value back from here. Um, so, I mean, that was always going to be not null. So I'm just going to get rid of this not equal to null. And it's actually, I mean, it's simpler just to do array i plus 1 j is not equal to null. I don't know what I was doing with this is piece null function. I'm sure I used it somewhere else, but I don't remember right now. And I started this project back in August. So, uh, good lord. Array i minus 1 j is not equal to null. All right, cool. So let's try this now. Again, I might need to fast forward just to make sure I get everything on here. But we're already starting without having a match that isn't detected, so that's a good sign. Okay, that's good enough for me for now. Now, the other issue that some people were having was that they could win the game, causing the win screen to come in. Just see so you guys, let me get out of here so you guys can see what I'm saying. They could win the game, causing the game win screen to come in. And then as they won the game, like if they won it on the last move, the pieces could fall and then they could lose the game and the game lose screen would come in. So uh, we're gonna take a look here at how to make sure that doesn't happen. So on our grid, on our node, when we uh, are sending out a game over signal, we're sending out game over and then what is the game win signal? What did I call that? Oh, check, bowl must send out the game win signal. So, goal holder, yeah, this sends out game one. So, there's a few things that we can do to fix this. Um, let's actually take a look at our goal holder script here. Game one. So, let's, let's keep our architecture that we already have. So, it goes to grid on goal holder game one state equals weight. So let's add a new state here. Let's add uh, a new state for winning the game. So weight, move, win. We could add one for lose if we wanted to, but I don't think we need that right now. Let's go back to the function that we're using here. And then let's not set state to weight, let's set state to win. And when we're decreasing our turns and all that. So we're doing that. Generate hint. I think I put it down here somewhere. Switch pieces. I know I'm not being super interesting today, so forgive me. Destroy matched. Match and dim, is piece null, add to array, get bomb pieces, find matches, touch difference, swap back, is color bomb. 
swap pieces, touch input, is in grid, pixel to grid, grid to pixel, match at, spawn preset pieces, sinkers, ASP sinker. Where am I emitting that signal to change the counter? So, where is that signal? All right, so those are the signals for those. Update score, setup max score, max score, piece value, streak, update counter. So it's Command F or Control F on Windows. Let's find where that is. All right. So, nope, that's emitting the signal for the beginning of the game. I don't want to change that one. After refill. All right, so if is moves. So I'm only going to do this if state does not equal win. And then I'll indent all that in. So if the state is win, we're not going to uh, we're not going to do anything with that. And if the state is win, we also won't be able to move. Um, uh, and then let's move this state move here. Let's, let's cut this from here so that we're also not putting it back into move when we already won so that they can't move the pieces in the background. So current counter value is zero, declare game over. And then let's say else so that we're not allowing them to move if they win as well. State equals move. And then if it isn't moves, I think it's being governed by the actual counter itself, isn't it? So let's go, it's not the goal holder. It's not the timer, the background, bottom UI. Let's look at the top UI here. So, score label, counter label. So, yeah, I, I forget stuff so much. I'm like the most forgetful person in the world. So, update counter, counter label, sub score bar make goal. <laughs> current score, current count. No, I guess... Where did I do that? Man. Hold on for a second. Okay, sorry about that. I, I could have just thought and looked at the timer under the grid. This is the game over timer. And gone to its method under node and signals. And then on timer timeout, we decrease the current value because this timer is set to be 1. Um... Emit signal, update counter, if current counter dot value equals zero. We're only going to declare game over if state is not equal to win. Um, we'll declare game over and then Yeah, on timer dot stop. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So it's a bevy of issues that we fixed fixed here. Uh, I'll try to update my git. Uh, as soon as I possibly can. I just forget to do it. Like I said, I'm absent minded, but I'll try to update my Git relatively soon. The next thing we're going to talk about is sounds. So that's actually kind of fun. I have a whole bunch of sounds we'll be using and a few different music tracks that you can use for background music. We'll talk about how to make it so that our background music loops. It plays consistently from the beginning of the game all the way to the game screen so that you don't have that weird situation where you're hearing the first five bars of the same song over and over again so that we don't you know, it's nice and con consistent. Uh, we'll talk about how to make a random sound when the pieces pop, and we'll talk about how to make noises whenever we press a button. So uh, that's coming next. After that, we're going to make it so that our grid is always in the center of the screen. Then we're going to add some screen shake, uh, and then we'll start talking about boosters. So we're pretty close to, to the finish line here. It's We can see it. It's coming up. We're good. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment down, or in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord where I'm chatting pretty much every day and there's lots of really cool people who have been working on this project as well. They've done lots of cool extensions to it that you can find. And yeah, 
I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.